Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Atomy Maths video. In this video, we're going to look at one of the most important distributions in statistics, the normal distribution. We're going to introduce this distribution by first looking at its shape and what this tells us about the variable that it's describing. Then we're going to see when this type of distribution may arise. Okay, so while you may not have heard of the normal distribution before, you've had some sort of interaction with them. They look like this. What this graph represents is the probability density of a continuous random variable. Remember that a continuous random variable is one that can take any value in a limited or unlimited range. Examples may be lengths, times, or masses. Probability density just represents the probability of randomly picking values in a particular range. Something noteworthy about the normal distribution is its shape. We can see that it looks like a bell, which is why it is often called the bell curve. Notice that it is symmetrical, which means that the mean will be smack bang in the middle. On either side of the mean, it tails off towards zero probability. What does this tell us in real terms? We have a good chance of observing the variable around the mean, but we have a much smaller chance of observing the variable a long way below or above the mean. Let's say that we're bakers who bake 30 centimetre loaves of bread. Well, when we say 30 centimetres, that's their length on average. Most of the time we will get loaves that are say between 28 and 32 centimetres, which is pretty close to the mean of 30 centimetres. This is why we have the bulk of our distribution around the mean. Most of the time we expect to get things correct in the baking process. But we sometimes bake loaves that are shorter or longer. It is possible that one day the yeast we used was expired and the loaves came out 15 centimetres long. Or another day the apprentice baker just made the loaves 45 centimetres because he wasn't concentrating. These situations would be really rare but still possible. That's the gist of the bell curve. We expect to get values close to the mean, and as we get further away from the mean, the probability of observing values approaches zero. So let's check that we've grasped the main content so far. Answer these quick questions for yourself. Pause here and have a go. So when do normal distributions arise? There are many reasons why there would be slight differences between the loaves of bread, some of which we've already hinted at. This might be because of random variation in the temperature of the oven, the position of the loaves in the oven, the amount of yeast used, the yeast's activity, and on and on. These are all examples of random errors, which means that the errors fluctuate up and down in a random manner. So in the real world, we tend to see normal distributions when the variation in our variable is caused by random errors. If you bake another loaf of bread, the random errors will combine in a way that produces a loaf of different size. In what types of situations are we likely to see normally distributed data? Well, that's a great question. In reality, we almost never see data that is exactly normally distributed because a normal distribution is technically perfectly symmetrical. But we do come across data that is approximately normally distributed. A common place to find normally distributed data is in measurements. Measurements often rely on instruments or humans that will cause random error. For example, if you got 20 students to measure the length of the classroom to the nearest millimeter, we would likely get 20 different lengths since each person will make small, random errors in the process. Okay, that's enough content for now. Let's answer some active recall questions to help us solidify the important content from this video. Pause here and answer these questions without your notes to help make it stick. In summary, the normal distribution is shaped like a bell, with the mean at the center. This means that we are more likely to observe values that are around the mean, we're unlikely to observe values that are much below or much above the mean, which is represented by the tails of our normal distribution approaching zero probability. The characteristic shape is generally the result of a combination of random errors. These errors can be the result of measurement or other factors that combine to create variation. 
scientific measurements are often normally distributed, since there will be random error brought about each time a measurement is made. Thanks for watching everyone, see you in the next video.